We are starting out on the 15th of these little journeys down the southwest branch and looking at something which is amazingly still there. I'm always amazed when something survives. It was uh, property for this was purchased in 1907 by the Arbogast Brock Company. Arbogast Brock. And I always say they went out of business because nobody, nobody could pronounce their name. Uh, they made supposedly unbreakable glass. It was a kind of glass with chicken wire embedded in it to keep it from breaking in the event of a fire so that the place wouldn't become a flue like a stairwell. And by uh, 1910, the place was in receivership and then went to a sheriff's cell and Whit Humphrey and I, uh, the place that became Walworth got hold of it. Now this is a place I really like. I like this shot, not because it's good photography, it sure isn't. But <clears throat> you can see the, uh, the streetcar barn, the place that was a, started out as a glass company and became a cafeteria. But over in here you can see stuff that, you know, it's really hard to find any photography of. This is the plate shop of Memphis Steel. This is their boiler house, their powerhouse. Up here is their office. Over here is the crane yard and of course the southwest branch running down here. That's a good shot there of the, uh, the old trolley barn. And then over to the right you can see <clears throat> that place that started out as a glass company. Uh, here is something else that you don't see very often. This is, was Huff Station, which carried passengers until 1940. And then after that, of course, they continued to ship freight out of there. This was Walworth's uh, <clears throat> loading platform. A 1941 map. Interesting because 1941 was the 50th anniversary of South Greensburg. Uh, you'll see things like this was Porcelier. Over here was the train station. Over here was uh, a petroleum, com petroleum company named uh, Sinclair Refining. They offloaded petroleum products and shipped them out from there. Now right here, right along Huff Avenue was a plot owned by Republic Petroleum. They must have had a gas station there, which I have no knowledge of at all. Down here was the Y that went out to where we'll see in the next production, the mine, Keystone Number 2. Down here at the bottom of Kohler Street was a place where they made wagons. It was a wagon company called Par. And you'll see a Par Street there. And here, this is that place I was talking about. It started out as Par Wagon Works that made wagons. This just gives a little bit of clarity to it. Avoid some of the confusion. This is the Y. And the uh, Keystone's Mine number two was right out here. And this is the building that we're going to look at, number five. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Leroy Smeltzer, for this great pick. This is the building I was talking about up here. <clears throat> this is the way it looked about 1950. And by that time, it had lost some parts. It was one time a uh, built in an L configuration. Part of the L is missing because there was a fire in 1932. And there's all kind of interesting things in these old photos if you want to spend the time to look for them. See, there was a water tank here, and there was a railroad, a uh, little railroad, another little station. And 
Okay, this is the building that I was pointing out right at the base of Colder Avenue. <clears throat> this is the front of it, about what, the way it looked in the 1950s. The back of the building, it, it still sits there, it's still there, but it doesn't have this gable roof anymore. That was destroyed. This shows the Parr plan of lots. Jacob Parr and company began a wagon company down here. They had a uh, siding. They bought property and put in a plan of lots where they auctioned off lots. There is still a Parr Street, which recalls the time when the Parr Wagon Works were one time located down at the bottom of Calder Street. <clears throat> this is what it looked like. A very bad photo, but it's uh, all we have. Well, I mean, we don't have much more. This, this part perished in a fire in 1932. This part over here is still, still with us, but without the gable roof. This is what it looks like in Sanborn mapping. And you see the uh, little boiler house to the south of it and the railroad siding. These are the guys that worked there in 1906. Over here is the one-story part that is still there. This is the two-story part that perished in a fire in 1932. And this is what they were doing. They were making wagons. <clears throat> But the early 20th century was a bad time to start making wagons because it became obvious that uh, automobiles were <clears throat> becoming a big thing. So the guys at Par Wagon Company decided rather, you know, it was easier to, rather than beat them, to join them. The guys at Par Wagon made a truck. It wasn't that complicated to transfer from making wagons to making uh, <clears throat> trucks. Many of the early auto companies started out, auto and truck companies started out in wagon shops and places like that. The, uh, the truck, I can't tell you for sure whether they made just one truck or a bunch of them. I really don't know. But I know they made at least one. And by 1912, the place was up for sale and sold to the Greensburg Swing Company. And they made swings there. <clears throat> Matter of fact, the people who own it now, the flocks, remember their dad telling them that the uh, place used to be a swing company. And I think we're about time now, and we're going to say so long until the next little production where we will see things at the uh, Rattlebaugh branch. We'll take a little, uh, little recess from the southwest branch and go out to Rattleball branch and see a few things out there. Bye-bye now. That's, that's what's there right now. <clears throat>